Sanso Lex. Facebook, um, yeah, that's not so. Let's go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, we we normally play our music, so I'm, I'm kind of thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to the music. I, I, I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, hold on, where our music? But anyway, uh, you guys can reach us at K I N G A N D E Y E. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. All right. That get me in the mood right there. All right. We good. Yeah, we vibe. All right. So, again, you guys can reach us at K I N G A N D E Y E 369 at gmail.com. Again, that's King and I 369 at gmail.com. Uh, if you guys want to come on the show, if you have topics that you would like for us to discuss, or if you want to come on and discuss those topics with us, please feel free to. Send us out that email and we will get you on for sure. Um, we have a, a great guest coming up for you guys this week, Mr. Stuart Gragg, G R A G G. Um, but he's a semi driver, professional driver. Um, so we are really looking forward to having him on with us. So you guys be on the lookout for that. Yes. Even though by the time you hear this, that interview would happen already. But hey, it is what it is. You can yes, always tune in and watch our previous live videos. We have several, several great ones. So go back and listen to those. Um, but in the meantime, in between time, we got a good topic for y'all. Um <laughs> look, <laughs> this is one of those topics. Female input would be lovely, but since we don't have one, um, we just gonna jump into it. Has having kids out of wedlock become the norm? Um, <laughs> since the late 1970s, the out of wedlock birth rates have soared. I'm one of them. Um, creating a newer and more diverse. First family makeup, sometimes with the father being the primary caretaker, but in most cases, the mother being the sole provider for the child. With the increase from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and now the 2000s of society, now accept that it's more about human nature rather than religious views. Yes, sir. What would say you to that so far? Uh, I, I'm kind of like because I, I've grown up in a household, you know, as a, as a young man, where a lot of my aunties, you know, had kids out of wedlock. So mm -hmm. this is back in the seventies. Um, I'm kind of used to it, which is, mm -hmm. is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. But I don't know my my re religious views. Um, and how they affect me as far as that view is I'm human before I'm religious. <laughs> so I, I just accept the fact that, you know, people are making babies. So I have no issue. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. I will say, um, as far as society now accepting it, as human nature rather than uh, religious, whatever. Um, I just don't think that that even matters to most people. Um, right. And I say that because <clears throat> all those all those opposite Talk, 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 talk. But at the end of the day, a lot of them are fornicating, being adulterous, uh, having kids out of wedlock. So to me, I don't even think the 
religious aspect even matters to it. Um, to be semi-technical, mm-hmm. I think this is a, a an issue that has plagued us from slavery. Um, and I say that because you know, our family units were broken up so much that we've kind of adopted that that mindset or that family dynamic where there's a big percentage of our population just out there having babies and pops disappearing or, or you know, there's, there's no real connection there's no real connection beforehand. And I say that because, um, you know, when two people decide to hook up and have sex and do this, that, and the other, it's all, it's all good. It's all hunky-dory and all this, that, and the other till shorty pop up and be like, hey, I'm pregnant. Um, right. And then from there, that triggers something with it either in the man's head in heart or that woman's man, head in heart. And if they don't have that solid connection beforehand, um, that, some, that is something that you can't force. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's something that can develop, but in, in the, 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 the far regions of your brain, if you ain't with it, then you're not with it. So that's how I look at it, you know, just off the jump. Yeah. Um just just listening to you talk, you know, about the, the connection part of it. And it, it, it jarred my, my memory of me hearing the fact that arranged marriages have a higher success rate than the average marriage. Mm. Um I wish I had those, you know, st- st- statistics thank you in front of me but unfortunately i don't have those in front of me but um that's interesting you know when i heard that that arranged marriages have a higher um success rate like so someone who or couples who you know may have or did not know each other before their actual wedding um I guess you can say festivities uh, have a higher rate of staying together than someone who, you know, they may have known each other, you know, for a great deal of time prior to getting married. So I just, for the connection part of it, like, how do you even do that? And I, I would be interested in having someone on the show, you know, who, who's been a part of arranged marriage or who is currently in an arranged marriage. Um, just so we could get more insight on that topic. But anyway, I, I think it's like you said, just because you uh, have that relationship beforehand um, <clears throat> between the mother and father, there's still no guarantee that, you know, they're going to stay together. Um, but again, the, at that point, they've already made this this child and brought this child into this world. So, I think that when you you have churches who frown upon you know the human being aspect of it, um, I think that that's that's kind of crazy. And I guess that takes us to look into our next uh, our first question: um, Has the increase of people leaving the church? have anything to do with it. Um, I don't think so. Um, As I was saying, to me, it it doesn't matter um, whether you're in church, out of church, or whatever the case may be. Um, The thing about people is we have free will. And with free will, uh, we're you know, we're going to do what pleases us, um, regardless of, of your, your religious status or whatever. We are, at the end of the day, we're going to do what pleases us. 
Um, so I don't think people leaving the church has anything to do with it because there's a big population of people in church who have children out of wedlock. Um, I would say as far as that, um, I don't, in my experiences in church, um, I have rarely seen the preacher, pastor, or whoever is up in the pulpit, um, really drill down the importance of a family unit. Um, so for me, I would say those who are actively engaged and involved in church, I don't think that that, that, that dynamic is being pushed. That's just, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's an actual correlation. I'll be honest with you. And the reason I say that is because people were doing that um, way back in the day, you know, when churches were um, really synonymous, you know what I'm saying, with the, the whole marriage thing and, you know, being a family unit and all of that. Right. Um, I think the decline of people willing to participate or um, attend church, I don't, again, I, I just don't think that there's a, a correlation there. Um, human nature overrides everything, I, I think. But to say that just because people are leaving the churches, that's why human, I mean, more babies are being born out of wedlock. No, I, I I can't say I agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, yeah, I, I just don't. Um, but then you, you have to... The funny thing about this topic to me, mm -hmm. um, wedlock is, is a... Having kids out of wedlock is a a more of a Western civilization concept. It then it became a worldly concept over time. Right. Because if you if you can hop in a time capsule and go back in time as far as you can to every period, um marriage wasn't a thing. Um you claimed a woman a man claimed a woman as his own and had a kid or two. Or he claimed a flock of women and had kids. So this whole out of wedlock thing, um, having kids out of wedlock, I feel like, and I could stand to be corrected, but I feel like it came about when, as, as, as our society got into further into its current state, Mm -hmm. I think that it became a thing, a topic, an issue, and all of that other stuff because, you know, a lot of kids were being born out of wedlock and they weren't taken care of. So that became a thing that evolved into a whole bunch of things that stand in place today. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I could agree with that. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's just a whole thing of, again, we we could sit up here and say, you know, that while we were in school, we were constantly being taught, you know, the importance of um, protecting yourself and <laughs> my my parents always stress to us, you know, you bring a child in here, your ass is taking care of it. We're not taking care of it. So that was definitely a uh, determining factor for me, you know, as far as like not having any kids before it was my time. Um, there were a, a few, you know, points in my life where I was extremely scared because I thought that I had, you know, something like that going on, meaning a kid before I was married and before I was ready, but um, thanks to the creator, it just didn't work out like that. But 
as far as like actually being married, that was something I wanted, you know, before I had my first kid. And, you know, it just worked out that way for me. Okay, so um, <clears throat> in your experiences growing up and from mm -hmm. what your parents told you, um, because honestly, the only thing I was ever told was you better not bring no damn babies into this house. That's the only thing I was told. <laughs> Were you ever talked to? Were you ever taught? Were you ever directed, sat down or anything and had the whole thing explained to you that you should or it would be better if you waited until you were married to have kids? Or was this something that was just resident in your brain from what you experienced growing up? Um, that talk, meaning, you know, the sit down conversation, I never had that conversation with either one of my parents. Um, it, it was more or less, you know, don't bring no damn kids in here, especially, you know, while you're young. Um, and it, it's kind of funny that you would ask that question. Um, one of the things I will say was a, a good friend of mine who we previously had on the show, Mr. Carkey Mims. Uh, we had to be shit, in our early 20s, maybe like 21, 22, something like that, even if that. But anyway, we were... Um, Heading somewhere and me and him, you know, got on a conversation on having kids before, you know, we got married. And he stressed uh, one thing to me that I, I still hold on to this, this very day of <clears throat> always being careful of who you uh, share your seeds with, mm -hmm. meaning who you, you share your sperm with, who you right. want to have a child with. And, um, I don't know. We, we just got into the whole conversation and, you know, again, it has always stuck with me. Um, another thing was growing up watching, you know, some of my cousins who didn't have a father uh, in their life. And, you know, a good majority of them uh, were born out of wedlock. Um, and I just saw the things that they went through, you know, growing up of, uh, wanting to have that, that male figure in their lives and, you know, for good or bad, the ones that were there were there and the ones that, that they really wanted to be there were or weren't there. So that was just something I, I didn't want my kids to have to experience. So that was a major part of me not having kids <clears throat> before this time. Yeah, um, I never had that talk. Um, uh, for me, it was one of those things where I wanted to be married before I had kids um, because, you know, I wanted to break that cycle um, of being, you know, you know, being, having children born out of wedlock goes on for generations and generations. <clears throat> so, you know, I didn't want to continue that that path. But, you know, the problem with that is if, if you don't come from, not all the time, but a lot, sometimes if you don't come from that background where either you have two parents in the household or you have eight, you know, you grow up with one parent, but both your parents are in your life, or you just have one parent there. A lot of the times, especially for us, we don't have that, that guidance to where, you know, it's, hey, you know, make sure you do this, 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 and this before you decide to have children. Um, and as you were, you know, you know, speaking about, you talking to uh, Carky about, um, be careful who you, you know, share your seeds with, mm -hmm. that is another thing that is not taught to us as we're young. Um, sure that. And, and the, 
problem with that is, <laughs> unfortunately, that becomes a, a, a secondary reason why children are being born out of wedlock. Um, you know, because like like I said, you get with somebody, y'all kicking it, it's all fun and games, it's all, you know, hunky dory until them seeds pop up in there and mm -hmm. the dude realizes like, damn, this is not this is not what I want. But it's like either you didn't listen, you weren't taught, or you just thought you can ski and ski and slide. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> So it, it's, it's one of those things. It's like it, it's it's on the parents and it's on the individual. Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's unfortunate that something like this continues for generations, but it, it is definitely something that needs to be limited. Yeah. So that leads us into, you know, the second talking point. Uh, does the cycle of having kids out of wedlock continue for generations? Um, I, I'll say definitely it does. Um, but my father was born out of wedlock. And uh, thanks to the creator, all of his kids were born in wedlock. <laughs> so... I just think that from watching him as a as a young man and the things that he experienced, um, you know, we we've had those conversations about what it was like for him uh, growing up without you know having his father in his life, um, and for him that you know that was a, a big thing of making sure the kids that he did have were, were in with. Uh, I don't think he pretty much pre-planned it the way it worked out, but it just worked out that way. Meaning, you know, we, my father got married when he was 18, I think, 18 or 19, you know, and him and my mom stayed together until her passing. So that was well over like, shit, 50 some years, I want to say, or, or close to 50 some years. Um, but again, the going back to the generation aspect of it, um, my uncles, only one of my uncles, had a child outside of wedlock. But the rest of them, they were they were all married before, you know, having kids. You know, it, it's it's interesting. That you know, we like to say. Know better, you do better. All right. Um, but a lot of people know better, but don't do better. Um, and I, I don't even know what to put that on. I don't know if, if that could be put on um, their environment, uh, uh, their upbringing. I just don't know. Um, it doesn't have to continue on for generations. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the strange thing about it is, you know, you can have a complete family unit or, or a single parent household that has more than one child born out of wedlock and you can have one child that goes off, get married and have kids and one child that goes off and have children out of wedlock. Um, <clears throat> so it doesn't, it can go, it has the potential to go on for generations, but I think that when a person truly wants the best for themselves, they can strive to avoid having children out of wedlock. Um, but the other thing that I want to, you know, I want to make sure I throw out in mm -hmm. that is that it's not always um, a generational thing, you know. No. You know, people can have the, the greatest of intentions when they deal with someone. They can 
pre-planned and this, that, and the other. And, um, they can say accidents happen, whatever. Um, but the thing about it is, if you are acting responsibly, you will have responsible results. Um, right. I mean, I was going to say something else, but then I was like, I can't, I can't say that because I, I was going to say that, you know, sometimes you, you plan to be married before you have kids and then something happens and that's it. Um, but again, if, if you're if you're, you're you're acting responsibly, it's less likely for that to happen. So, um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I'll, I'll, I'll say this though. There have been many a nights I have thrown my jewels on the table and just rolled the dice. <laughs> if you can read in between the lines, mm-hmm. meaning not always, you know, using my big head. Um, and again, thanks to the creator, I, I don't have any kids, you know due to those poor judgment (laughs) (laughs) moments because uh, I mean, there were times when I had, you know, relationships, serious relationships where I wanted to have, you know, kids. And again, it wasn't that I was thinking about marriage at the time. It was just, I was so in love with a person at the time that, you know, going up in there shooting without, you know, putting any caps out. But, um, Thank goodness that that never worked out because I will probably be paying a price, as they say, um, because things obviously didn't didn't work out between me and those those females because, yeah, you know, craziness. But anyway. But yeah, it's the kick out. And we're talking about um, as having children out with like become the norm. Um, we barely scratched the the, the, the surface on this topic. We barely got into it, but yes, sir. we're gonna be back and we really gonna dive in and you know really cut the meat off the bone. Uh, mm-hmm. So again, she's your man, so that's your poet, my brother. Sun Soul X. Guys can reach us at that K I N G A N D E Y E three six nine at gmail dot com. Yeah, they and we shall return. Yes, sir.